everybody and welcome here to another kerfuffle webinar and i am absolutely excited and delighted to have with us today a massive massive new addition to the kerfuffle family really really pleased here to have jem here today jem savas and ben walden from plentific how are you both hi simon hi simon it's great, great stuff, yeah. good stuff. Great. Um, so guys um we've been Talking, uh, talking off air, talking about, uh, talking previously there, and one of the things that I was really, really keen to get straight off the bat there is just give us a bit of a, a bit of background about the business so that people understanding and watching this are going to get where you guys come from. Would you mind just giving us a, a really brief kind of elevator pitch of where Plentific has, 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 has come about? Yeah, absolutely, Simon. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, you know, we started this business being um, property developers and ex uh, ex finance guys and um we were landlords we were landlords we worked very closely with many um property managers uh, in london and um had to deal with tenants had to deal with property managers had to deal with contractors repairs and being landlords um found it a bit difficult to solve that technology piece like the transparency piece the data piece the end-to-end -end experience and so we decided to to launch a platform and uh, thinking about how could everyone in the value chain um, get the best in class experience and how can we connect data and make it really transparent what's happening. And, you know, I always felt that as a landlord, I had great agents uh, helping me, but then things happened that weren't that transparent and that created friction in the relationship. Mm. And um, the tenant didn't have that, you know, app in their hand to book the repair or get feedback on things. And that's really, yeah, well, eight years ago now, uh, eight, nine years ago, when, when Plentific came about, we've been focusing heavily on the housing sector initially as a market. Um, we're, uh, we're the largest uh, brands out there. We have um, very well-known um, clients who have 50,000 plus units, 100,000 plus units. Um, we're in the mid-market space uh, and we have smaller clients as well um, that manage smaller portfolios. And over the last few years, we expanded into um, Germany as well. And we also have a US business and um, PRS is sort of our newest uh, sector in the UK. We have many PRS clients in Germany. And now also in the UK, we have around three, 400, 370, I think, uh, PRS clients already that use some of our modules. So it doesn't mean they use everything yet, but um, yeah, that's a little bit of a summary. Hmm. That's, that's great great to get that feedback and i mean i think that's a really important point here isn't it is that where, where we get really excited about this is that we've always challenged ourselves to look and see uh, who are the exciting players that are coming into you know into this marketplace who can really make a difference and you guys you know some of the stats that you were throwing over when i asked you to, to identify standout stats you know there's 950,000 uh, managed units there, 18,000 vetted contractors team of 303 worldwide, 93% first time fix. These are all fantastic things that you're bringing to the fore, aren't you, in the residential space? And I think that's that's hugely exciting for the people that are going to be your clients going forwards. Mm, 100%. I mean, I'm, I think, you know, something that that we're what we're offering uh, more than just a piece of tech is something that's tangible. Mm. And uh, that, you know, you said 18,000 vetted contractors, uh, it re being able to sort of tap into those and monetize it uh, for your businesses is really just a game changer. It's not just a bit of plug tech that you, you know, you can you know, put in and, and go with it. You know, it's having something that is uh, at your fingertips to help you out of a difficult situation or to speed something up or as you know a USP or whatever uh, allow is something that that can't be easily done and uh, so that's where we sort of have our, our yeah, USP. Think, you know Simon on the on the numbers um, we've grown significantly quickly and <clears throat> you know we also have a big team now in place to continuously develop new and in innovative products uh, to improve the platform. Um, I think when we talk about vetted uh, you know, the, the real difference of Vetted for us is that we educate, we digitalize contractors, we help them use the platform and um, doing that really in a marketplace concept, as well as, you know, connecting single contractors enables us to fulfill repairs voids at speed that is unforeseen, un unseen, and which has huge implications for property managers and letting agents, uh, because we help them save time, uh, we help them uh, get works done quicker, um, you know, involving landlords and what's happening is very transparent. They can see it. They can 
um, get a great feeling that their property managers at the cutting edge of technology and they use a, a strong local network. And a lot of agents have great relationships already with contractors, but maybe not necessarily as um, technologically enabled um, to, yeah. to show that. And because we um, on the platform have the vetting fully digitalized for all kinds of works or including out of hours and emergency works and so on, that allows us to give best in class resident experience because everything can be pushed back into the resident, which ultimately gets that end to end experience really streamlined. Really interesting. And so, so uh, and apologies for being gauche, but this is me always racing towards the, uh, the, 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 the money shot uh, issues here. How does Plantific then help agents win more instructions? What is, you know, somebody sat here at the moment, they're in short supply out there. How is Plantific as a, as a company, as a solution able to help? I think I think when you know if you're going out on your MA and you know your the your landlord gets two agents over and they you know they're both trying to sort of win a fully managed uh, instruction, you know having that little bit of competitive edge over and ha but you know I think there's a sort of maybe a, a misconception that sort of I get landlords would think that you know agent would do what's right for them, not you know what's easiest for them, not what's right for the landlord. Yes. Um, and so I think you know. Being able to something our, our platform does, which is, is really is responsive quotes. So you can get up to five quotes for a work order that can be sent to the landlord and the landlord can choose which one. Right. You're suddenly giving the power back to the landlord. It's not just I'm going to choose what's easy for me. I'm actually going to consider you uh, as, as, a, as, as my client. And that just gives a bit of a more personal uh, edge uh, over your competitors, say, you know, any, any sort of medium to large works. Will consult you you choose the price at uh, that literally does give the that uh that little bit of extra to to help help win the business on a, on a yeah just adding to uh to what ben is saying speaking from a landlord's perspective i'm a landlord i use property managers and you know oftentimes the competition is fierce to win uh a, a piece of new work Absolutely. and you know when when you go to a landlord and say well you know i'm going to do a great service and this is my price for it as a landlord, I say, so what's your service? What, how are you going to be better than the other guy who's next to you on the street, right? Like, is it just on price or can you actually prove that you can do a better how service? How do you stand out? Yeah. How do you stand out? And this is how you stand out by saying, I'm going to be the best agent that will manage your property in the most advanced technology advanced way. And even further, I can show you the data and I can show you through the platform what's going on with your property. And so you're taking away the uncertainty around uh, the end of the year rent not being the same as it should have been. You're taking uncertainty away, like, did you get multiple quotes or not? And how did you choose that contract to do it and so on? So I think that is a competitive edge as a landlord myself would appreciate if someone, you know, would pitch to me and say, hey, you know, and the biggest impact on your rental yields will be the unknowns, right? The unforeseen, the boiler breaking down and uh, maintenance issues. And I will show you that we are the best in handling that for you. Look, I'm a, I'm a techie evangelist, so I'm always going to come at this. But what that transparency obviously puts back, it gets rid of all of that, as you said, the the concept that there are deals being done in smoky rooms, isn't there? That there's kind of, you know, money. Uh, the brown paper what, envelope. What, what you're doing is democratizing that process, isn't it? By that, by those works orders, they, they people. It doesn't really matter in whatever walk of life. If you present them with one, one option, they're always going to push back, aren't they? Exactly. So that's a lovely angle there to be able to say, look, guys, here's what we believe are the best options here, but ultimately the choice is back for yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, letting agents, uh, I think, always struggle to be transparent of what they do. Right. Yeah. They do a lot of work for, frankly, small fees. Yeah. You know, in my view, they should make more, but it's difficult to, to do that. But um, so being a landlord, having used many different agents myself, I can see what they do, but it's not always transparent. Mm. And so if you can be transparent, mm. that is the winner, in my opinion, because, you know, I can judge myself as a landlord if something breaks, if it's real. If it breaks, you got three quotes, then you got three quotes. That's all I'm asking you to do. And you're telling me exactly who, from whom and, you know, if they were good, when they're coming and uh, scheduling. And then my tenant can review that and say, yeah, that was a great job. And I'm happy as a landlord, right? So I think it's it's all about the uh, the end-to-end -end experience. It's all about the data collection. It's all about the transparency. And um, I think agents that adapt more and more technology will 
be able to win more business uh, for sure. Absolutely right. perfect. I mean, Ben, you'll know uh, Peter Knight, obviously, you know, one of the best in the business. And he's forever talking about making the invisible visible. And again, mm. it's just reiterating that, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. If you can get that across again to people, everyone's going to be, uh, uh, everyone's going to be a winner. I learned, I learned a fact recently from a from a, a study of one in six landlords have been hit, uh, hit with an unexpected bill that that they hadn't budgeted, yeah. you know, and then suddenly three hundred quid's come out of their their monthly, and that's that's their income. So, yeah. you know, they haven't they hadn't uh, they weren't realised because only oh, because the, the agent hadn't informed them because they they've got so much to do and so much and I, and, and it can easily slip under the radar. You know, so having that that transparency and clarity, then the landlord doesn't necessarily mind as long as it's a it's fair and b that it's they're they're informed, Excellent. right? And then they can then they can budget, then they can feel heard and, and, and empowered. So perfect. Yeah. Well, that makes that very clear to me. I can certainly see how you know any good agent could make that as a Seth Godin says the purple cow standing out from the standing out from the others and making that clear. But there's another angle here, isn't there, as well? So can you talk about how you help uh, make the agents more compliant as well? Do you go, Jim? Yeah, uh, yeah, you go, go, Jim. Yeah, I mean, we have a, a complete compliance suite of uh, products. And uh, in our compliance suite, we automate all the compliance requirements needed from a, a building perspective. So gas servicing, electrical servicing, fire risk assessments, and so on. Um, that might be part of an agent's offering to a landlord. Um, it's a dashboard that tracks it all. It's a dashboard that triggers uh, all the work that needs to be done to be compliant. It triggers... Um, the works to the right suppliers uh, automatically, no matter in what region you are. So you don't have to figure out anymore who you send this piece of work or who not. Um, we can um, offer service providers to help you do the gas servicing in a regular way and you know help you with that. So um, from a sort of compliance perspective, we help our uh, clients to to have a complete view on where they are across the entire portfolio and when it's done, how it's done. And help with the whole process as well right so we build the service provision and we engage with tenants uh, if our clients want that module to enable them to open the doors when the guys are coming and so on so um yeah i mean we are uh, not just looking at repairs and voids but we have a compliance suite uh, we have an inspection product um, that is very customizable and i mean you probably know about the touch right acquisition uh, they're on your website already uh, yeah, on the absolutely. platform and so we acquired that business for a very good reason. Great um, business, yeah, lovely business, great people. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? What what we're doing now is helping our uh, clients to not just do the inspection in a very uh, new way, but then say, what are you going to do with the outcome of that inspection? What's going to happen to the tasks? What's going to mm -hmm. happen to the work orders? And now we've integrated that business. Uh, you can get the work done. So no mm -hmm. more double keying. No more um, moving that information with a PDF to a contractor. Um, you can just push a button, you get a couple of quotes, or you just book a surveyor, or whatever it is you need, and that uh, inspection is sorted. And then and think, you know, it's a fully end-to-end -end embedded solution for our clients. Everything, everything works back to a work order at some point. Uh, so you know, to ha keeping it in house and keeping it, uh, you know, a single flow, as Jem says. Is it at the moment? I think you know, in, in the prop tech world, there's loads of softwares that do a lot of things, but yeah. not necessarily all talk to one another. Or you know, and there's a, there's a double king scenario. Or great, you get your inventory report, but there's a hole in the wall and you need a plaster to fix it. So you know, having that sort of the the the, the link, having it all together um really sort of gives uh you know greater transparency on a wider project what you're telling me ben is you're going to be the architect of kerfuffles doom because all of our <laughs> half of what we do for agents is <laughs> all of these different businesses and you're coming along and getting rid of those and so uh, thank you very much that's, that's really good of but i think uh, to, to whilst while sobbing inside let me just uh a bit let's put a bit of a bit of a, a, a voice on that Every single time we go to, to the marketplace, every year we do our reviews with suppliers about what they, sorry, with agents about what they find uh, frustrating with, with suppliers. And they are, they, they've always shocked themselves uh, as to actually how many different suppliers they actually have. And this is purely on the, you know, whether it's on the sales side or the letting side and just in the, in the property part of it, that's ignoring all of the normal stuff you need, like car fleets, telephone systems and everything else. 
you know, on average, our research tells us that the, uh, the average agent has 20 different suppliers. And that's a staggering amount, isn't it, really? To, not just in terms of, first of all, how do you kind of, how do you Jenga style tie together all of those different, you know, the, those different elements there, the lack of a finish efficiency that comes where there is the need to rekey between different systems and have them yeah. talk to each other. But secondly, is just on a really human fashion, that's a lot of different relationships to be having and, 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 and with, with different suppliers. And you can't really double down on that, can you, and get really close to just one provider where you might get an economies of scale. Mm, exactly yes you end up paying you know quite a lot for the same on the same property and the same thing um so that that's certainly our, our big picture and, and where we see it because it all when it comes to maintenance it, it all they all ties in and, and it can get quite complex yeah. especially when you're managing a project you know it might be there's a there's quite a lot of people and, and compliance and inspection it all falls into one big big project and it can be quite quite uh, you know difficult to, to, to keep an eye that's great yeah. to hear that um, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up with you over the coming months, uh, obviously, as well. See those, how that's hanging together and see what, what obviously what efficiency savings that people mm -hmm. get. Because what I do like talking to you guys about is although there is obviously such a such a core, cool, brilliant technical, uh, technological aspect to what you do, all the time you're talking, you're not talking from an ivory tower here. You're talking about very much about how you can help the people be more efficient. And I think we were spending a bit of time just talking about that off, 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 off camera, weren't we? Where you know you've you have plotted that whole life cycle of, of of property on this side of things and you've looked at that property manager in the middle and then said how do we actually make their lives easier and that's a wonderful quite simplest i mean it's, it's it's complex to do but it's a wonderfully simple vision isn't it to focus on yeah i mean this is uh, such a competitive edge that uh, we can offer to our clients because you know the uh, the understanding of their business is to the detail to the process step on our platform we have people every day that look at numbers, look at performances, they look at contractor behavior, they look at tenant feedback, and we go in and then start giving our clients advanced analytics dashboards where all this information is shown in a really beautiful way mm. so they can make the right decisions um, in, in their portfolios. And we are, uh, we have a, for larger enterprise clients, we have a consulting business, we go in and help them with change management um, where a client says, look, your operating platform is, you know, what we want to do going forward, but I don't quite know how to do it because I'm, I've been using like old school delivery models. Yeah. So we go in and help them with that. So we have a very deep understanding of um, every person's uh, inter uh, um, integration into the end-to-end -end experience. And we don't see ourselves as a, um, as a company that, you know, targets letting agents. Um, we see ourselves that is looking at the real estate sector and wants to build a platform as a service, a platform as a network effect solution. So we are trying to solve these pain points end to end. And so we are pretty much looking at, you know, what letting agents, what housing officers, uh, voice managers, compliance managers tell us every day and improve our solutions every day by seeing their pain points and not just selling a software, right? So um, everything we built is built for all of our clients. Mm. So it, it is a platform play for sure. And to your question earlier around uh, having 20 different systems, um, we probably never will be uh, as one, one singing, dancing solution in the future. But what we are doing is saying to our clients, look, if you have a platform play and your data, your, your information is on one system, maybe connected to your CRM mm. or ERP or whatever you're using, the integration of new solutions can go through a single platform. So we, we are the gateway to other um, prop tech solutions. We've integrated a bunch of them. Uh, we've done lots of integrations with uh, existing CRM providers uh, to get that data sync together. And we see our task very much as innovator and plugging in what our clients ask us in the right way because we already have the data. We already have the workflows. So we are the ones that go back and buy out an inspection product to say, you told us that inspections is a bit of a headache, right? So I'll solve it for you and then you can use it. So we become a bit of their digital partner in a way on the journey of digitalizing real estate. 
And that's what people are after, isn't it? I mean, I think you mentioned that. You've got, with uh, obviously my old mob repeat, you've got integrations with uh, SME, obviously professional, Agent OS, Acquaint, and, and, and many others there. What's, what's your kind of policy just on the on the CRM front? Have you got a, have you got very much a can-do attitude that you'd like to integrate with, with other, other CRMs, or is it kind of on a case-by-case basis? I mean, being a newer company, we, we see data as the key, uh, the key differentiator, right? So the client, it's the, it's the client's data. It's not yeah. a CRMs or ERPs or our data, right? So um, we want to do what's right for our clients. Yeah. And what's right for our clients is a fully integrated data flow from supplier to supplier to supplier, no matter who it is, and making sure that that data is enhanced and is, uh, is um, uh, in a place uh, to the best advantage of our clients. So in that way, we are API driven, open, um, webhook driven environments. We have done over 40 to three integrations uh, this wow. year alone, um, because we operate in three countries. There mm-hmm. are different partners in different countries. Um, we've integrated with very small companies. We've integrated with large players, like you mentioned, and other uh, sort of big ERP solutions like SAP and, yeah. uh, and others. And Absolutely. And, you know, it's not always easy, as you might know. Um, there's always a battle of like, why should I work with you kind of thing. But my real strong belief is that um, clients are desperate for people to connect. Yeah, in they the are. Right absolutely. Way. Category, and, yeah. you know, we are pushing the boundaries for sure there. We have a big API team. We have a book, a big platform team. And everything we do is say, how will this information flow from one place to another to make sure that you know, if a work order gets raised in one CRM solution, it flows into Plantific seamlessly. When the invoice is done, maybe it needs to go back into a finance system. How do we push it back in there? So there's no manual task. No. And that makes our clients' lives much easier. And Jem, just going back to it again, this is one of the benefits of you, you know, not being a, a brand new business where obviously you're, you're fighting for every bit of resource here. You, as, a, as a massively established company already, you have got that ability. That, 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 uh, that resource level of being able to have API teams can't be overstated, can it? Because mm. that is the things that make your clients different. Uh, I, I, I laughed a little bit when you said that data isn't, uh, isn't your own. I mean, I, then I had to correct myself. That's what I used to say to people two decades ago. But we've all changed now in the <laughs> CRM world, we yeah we we accept that that is their data, um and and I think one of the things that I like about it again is there it was Josh Fegan the the well known Australian uh, trainer he was over last week with a load of the uh, the very best agents around the uh, the co- co- the um, uh, the country with uh, EA uh, sorry the um, the Property Academy or Members Day, and he was striving the key element of what he was talking about time and time again was about looking at your own businesses and trying to look at where possible you can get to the you know the frictionless experience and that's come up in a couple of occasions hasn't it here today you've been talking about that very clearly that 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 willingness and Jim, you just you vocalized it really well there before that it's almost like some people don't even know where their where their their own processes might be broken because this is the way we've always done it snapping people out of those bad that those 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 bad habits is a it has a real can have a real benefit to them can't it yeah, I think maintenance is just something that has to be done. Uh, it's a second thought, you know, because it it's not really perceived as as uh, revenue generating, or say it's a sort of an afterthought. When actually it can it can actually be something very very uh, uh, beneficial to, to the business if if done right, and 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 uh, as say you know allow you to to manage more properties for less, and to, as say you know, other USPs. So looking at all types. Yeah, it really does does and, and, and I mean, there was a little wry smile there as you said obviously it can't i mean it can it, but being really honest it can be extremely lucrative can't it but it can be it doesn't have to be almost uh, uh, embarrassed about it because you can deliver a much better service as well as still making that revenue because you're able to do more aren't you and and to and to and to guarantee that better level of kind of um, uh, 100%. Yeah, you know, the, you know, it's 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 no secret that uh, you know a lot of agents will, will will add those sort of markups and having those and to demonstrate actually that you're pushing the price down uh, mm-hmm. means that the the landlord is saving money as well as you making revenue. So everyone's happy, you know, because you know as we all know when when we've got something fixed at home or something, you know, vote you get three three contractors in and the quotes will vary from you know here to here. Um, so, you know, we're just taking that chunk and, and, and monetizing it for everyone. Ben, if you're telling me I can have my cake and eat it, you know I'm going to be <laughs> that as a message. So, 
So, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think you know, obviously, you know Matt Goddard as well, and of course, he was my my protege, and I got to I, I got to know him when he was head of suppliers at, at Foxtons, and I remember just being taken into Chiswick Park there, and was kind of like just you know, it was to me back then the Willy Wonka, and the way that they have yeah. those efficiencies in place, the way that they work these supply things, it seems to me that lots of businesses are going down that same route now to make this really work, as you said, for all parties. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, if you look at the, the real estate sector right not even letting agents but they're obviously included um we're still not very advanced in how we're perceived as a sector by tenants by landlords we're still perceived quite backwards right and quite sort of untrustworthy a bit sort of not very transparent and we just have to break through that because I mean, we have some great great companies being letting agents we have great uh, uh ways of finding tenants and so on but like it's all down to people not seeing how to use it to their benefits, right? The technology. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, I mentioned ordering a pizza is easy now, ordering a book or yeah. whatever on Amazon is easy now. Why can't we do that with real estate? Yeah. And I think that's what we're working on, right? I think it's, 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 a, it's a really good uh, 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 goal to, to aim for and as well. But the challenge has been, of course, when I've looked at this before and tried to look at... <laughs> look at the underlying reasons where that lack of trust comes soon. Of course, a large part of it is that obliqueness because actually lots of the process is quite complicated. And so by definition, it's going to take technology like yours to kind of, again, that point about make the invisible visible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you look at, um, you know, CRM systems, they they all have, you know, work order management or like contractor plugins and yeah. how, but we we need to go to the next level, right? Like, if you um, if you order the taxi before through an app, um, you might have gotten one or not. Now there are three or four different app providers that you can instantly book it, right? So yeah. it doesn't mean that because there are CRMs in place with those work order functions that that's the best we can do. No. Um, and that's why you went in and you know from our own pain points, uh, having uh, different property managers, having different uh, properties, saying how can it connect better. And you need to own the digitalization of the service providers, of the contractors, the surveyors, you know, the, all, all those people. So you can do the end-to-end, -end, right? And you can really manage that in a better way. Um, and I mean, the transformation we've seen with some clients has been phenomenal on both cost side, on uh, property managers being able to manage a lot more properties with the same time they have. So they're more efficient. They can earn more money that way. Uh, Further afield as well yeah, in, in, in areas fields, um we have a client that has been scaling their business to us because they have now supply chains available to them so they don't have to find their own contractors they don't have to do their own vetting uh yeah. they just access it to us um so they can start you know promoting their services in in a new city for example um so there are yeah lots of benefits if you do it right but as you say it's it's complex right and yeah um, as a so business, i hadn't thought about that that ability yeah. yeah literally to kind of get into new marketplaces without that whole what would have traditionally taken such a long time to build up those relationships is a is another key angle you can bring in your kit bag isn't mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. that's really interesting that's really interesting um and oh, i mean what would be wonderful let's let, let's talk over the coming months It'd be great to talk to some of those clients and understand some of those some of those case studies that they're getting back to hear it from the uh, the horse's mouth as it were because mm -hmm. no doubt at all that sounds like the sort of stuff that anyone's going to be interested in and just give us a flavor then what's the kind of value that you're going to be able to bring to kerfuffle members you know that we've got that efficiency thing we've got the compliance is there anything else i'm missing that we're going to be able to we're going to be able to do I mean, there's we've something we did see. Obviously, we've learned a lot. It being in the, in the social housing sector and and doing the volume, so we can we can look at the numbers and things. And and I think uh, you know clearing bottlenecks was a was a big one. You know, because sometimes you know you'll 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 uh, end you have an end in, end of tenancy, and uh, all of a sudden your your contractor is off sick or he can't he's busy for the next two weeks, and or you know you've got a, a rush to find someone and to get it back on to to get the next tenancy right yeah. so lost revenue there so having those clearing those bottlenecks we saw you know from from our from our housing associations we managed to sort of reduce it less than half uh you know in and uh, in the in the sort of average times when we looked at the numbers so you know keep having that uh having that ability there is, is, a, is a key one 
And it's only going to increase, isn't it? So the, the wonderful thing is, you know, I, I can't believe actually it's taken us this long in before I, I, I make reference to kind of big data or anything else like that. But as you are getting more and more of this data, more and more of these analytics, you can start to, start to benchmark and make assumptions, can't you, that's going to actually continue to deliver kind of information, that actionable information to your, your client base. Exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, we are... Um able to tell our clients how they can improve their processes in real time like yeah. not even like every month where we have to talk to you but they just see it right they log in their analytics tools and mm. uh, we're starting to recommend what you can do to improve your uh, business um and yeah as i mentioned you know we have clients who've grown significantly to us because of that and you know we you know touch right is obviously uh, on carefuffle already and so we have members uh, who are using that and um, you know, the value benefit we bring is very much thinking about how we can improve their businesses going forward, right? So with uh, TouchRide, we now integrated it. So we have the first clients going through and saying, oh, yeah, I've just done an inspection. I need the work done. So easy. Plentific pops up. You get the work done. Job, job done, right? So um, there is a constant um, innovation happening here. Uh, like I mentioned, we are 315 employees now. Um, so quite a decent size in a very short yeah. period of time. And we see a lot of workflow every day to understand what works, what doesn't work, how can we improve, where can we innovate? And, you know, we always talk about a puzzle piece at Lentific. You know, we're a very small puzzle of everything we want to do going forward. And um, so, you know, if you work with us, you're going to get updates on our property labs, uh, on innovations. Uh, we have lots of webinars. Uh, we invite clients in, talk about their pain points. And, um, it's a true sort of digital partnership that we run here. So very yeah. much looking forward to talking to more, more of professional members. Great. Well, I encourage anyone to obviously pick up because what, what's happening there is what it seems to me is that you've got a huge amount of resource there in terms of like the human resource yeah. focused on, 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 a, on a, you know, quite a narrow area as well. So you can specialize in the way that let's just say that the, the CRMs are kind of uh, they're specialists in generalism, aren't they? They've got to be across the entire gamut of, of yeah. every part of it. But to a degree, that kind of leaves themselves spread a bit thinly, whereas you can de do a deep dive and start to deliver some real to real added value. Absolutely. And that's what we do with our clients. Right? We plug into existing ERP CRM solutions. Yeah. Because we don't offer everything that a CRM offers. But what we do offer is say, we have digitalized the contract the world. We understand workflows in detail, also from the contractor side, how they manage their people, how they want to schedule. What does a first fix mean? How do you come back? Uh, how do you manage a void project? It's more complex. Um, we've gone quite into detail and sort of built that into the platform. And um, you know, payments is all built in. We have um, thought through really the whole flow and um, that creates a lot of efficiency for our clients. Great. And, and, and you mentioned a couple of times that reducing the voids. So that's an aspect of very much you focus on, is it, for your clients? So voids is one uh, module that we have. And um, there's a basically a project management tool in Plentific, uh, like a voids manager. Yeah. And basically we build an inspection before or after. And then that creates your voids. Uh, in the void, you can say what needs to be done and walk through and have it uh, collect the data digitally, uh, pictures and so on. And then raise the work order for uh, either directly to the contract relationship you have or go to marketplace and get multiple quotes on the void. Right. And because we have so many contractors, you get quotes immediately. You know, and then you can push the button saying, go get the work started. You're not waiting around for anything as traditionally you would have you're been. Not, well, not yeah. Around, and then you're, you're also tracking the, the, the void work on Plentific. And then when you're done, if you like, you can do another post void inspection and uh, go into a property, say, yeah, this has all been done nicely. Look at this property. And guess what? You can share it with the landlord if you like to say, this was the process. How awesome is this? It only, it only takes one chain of a contractor to be ill or off or not working or delayed to hold up the whole process. You know, yeah. we, uh, we had a, a meeting earlier that said, uh, well, the pipe leaks, you need the plumber then to fix it, then the plasterer to replaster it. And then three days later, you need someone to paint it. Yeah. right you see and that's just one example of a, parts, a whole yeah. of a whole moving parts that needs to be to you know uh, run as a as a well oiled machine okay, so uh, i feel a bit cheeky asking you after you've told us how much you're doing and everything else but what i mean what does the the future for plentific hold what have you got on the horizon at the moment that you can tell me about of course 
Um, yeah, I mean, we, we think uh, very much around uh, the residential and commercial space. Um, so we have uh, a few clients on the commercial side where we're expanding into the commercial area. Um, we are uh, building out um, more and more workflows uh, that we can cover through the platform, not just repairs and voids and compliance, but we, we're working on an asset management module. Um, we're working on plant maintenance and um, IoT implementation, so we can also look at preventative maintenance for our clients um, and, you know, working out further and further how these services get booked, how you can um, fulfill them. Um, that's sort of the core of what we do. Um, and clients are, as you probably know, asking us for new modules and going deeper into the tenant. Clients, clients never stop asking for stuff, do they? Clients <laughs> never stop asking. And uh, yeah, we've got you know a lot on the, in the pipeline already, but um, there's a lot of ideas of how we can embed partners into the platform, how we can build uh, things ourselves. But you know, we are dealing with tenants, we're dealing with property managers, and we're dealing with suppliers. And there's a lot to be done around you know around those three stakeholders. Yeah. And, and that's a really good point as well, just to, just to reiterate that I kind of joked about it, but actually having some of those really high profile clients that you definitely have there as well, or as I used to talk all of high maintenance, but that's in the best possible uh, way, really, because they have the highest standards, don't they? They expect the most. But if you have a if you have an ethos of listening to those clients, that's going to keep you ahead of the game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I. I love complex clients and difficult clients because they are the ones who usually have grown significantly as well, right? So they, they are uh, requesting a standard from you. They have a lot of uh, requirements and oftentimes they also have a lot of opportunity to improve their operations. Yeah. And so we're in a position to say, we can help you with that. And you also have a big business so we can grow with them. Um, and, you know, we, have started the wrong way as a com as a young company. We went to the top first and worked with the largest, who are the most complex housing associations, local yeah. councils. You know, lots of lots of different demands, and we learned a lot there. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we have a way to I think line up what enterprise means, what mid market means, what SMB means, and um, you know, we we like a challenge, and we yeah. also have no problem telling our clients, look, we don't think this is the right thing to work on, or we don't think. Uh, that's is important. Easy, that's really important, isn't it? There's nothing. There's only thing one one thing more dangerous than a company that says no to its clients all the time, and that's one that says yes to them all the time. Sometimes challenging them and asking why do you want to do that is really really important to to do your job in the best possible way. Absolutely, and you know we we challenge our clients all the time, and um, they sometimes say no, and we feel like we need to do the same, right? And. Um, mm -hmm. There are, you know, preconceived ways of doing things in real estate, and we sometimes say, "Why? Why do you do it that way? Can we not change?" We've always it? done it that way. That's always yeah. Good. We've always done it that way, and you know, there are good reasons why it's done that way, and we leave it alone. And then there are good reasons to say maybe you change it. And uh, and so I think ultimately for us, our client is what I call the consumer, and consumer in our case is everyone: is the yeah. tenant, is the property manager, and is the supplier. Yeah. And I know we're talking to letting agents here, but um, the way we see it is like it needs to improve everyone's life. It needs to make the property manager's life more efficient and make him more yeah. money. Yeah. It needs to make the contractor's life better and make him more money. And it needs to make the tenant's life better because we're sorting out issues that they face. That makes the landlord happy. And so that's how we think on a, on a daily basis. Excellent. So I've made a few notes here just in terms of a few takeaways from, from kind of listening to you guys. So first and foremost, you, you, know, you provide local jobs for local people to ensure a fast turnaround really within that uh, proprietary mar marketplace that you've got. Those 18,000 uh, quality vetted uh, uh, tradespeople is, is a really key first element of what you have to do. Secondly, you, you know, those agents that decide to work with you can get a competitive advantage, can't they? That ability to share multiple quotes and maintenance, giving, you know, pricing transparency, again, can be a really, really key way of showing you've got their best interests at heart, as it were. Mm. And then I think the final part for me is really with, with Plantific's data to hand uh, aiding themselves, you've got a single source of truth there, haven't you? You know, that gives them real-time information, visibility and accountability. And through that platform, agents can really start to make really, you know, operational decisions and indeed cost savings decisions that's going to help them and their landlords. 
perfect spot. If you, if you I'll disagree, that's a good summary. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a great summary. Yeah, absolutely. You've got that, you've got that completely wrong, Simon. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know the the having the uh, one sort of you know with the, the contractor uh, you know sector is is you know always he said he said she said type you know, scenario and I think that's key is 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 uh, you know trying to trying to digitize the what is a very non digitized sector sector. Um, it's, it's gonna so be... guys, I mean, first and foremost, anyone watching this, obviously, it sounds like you, you, you know, if you're looking at efficiency, you're looking at how can you, how can you stand out from the crowd, you know, how can you get the economies of scale? First and foremost, is you've got to pick up the phone and have a conversation with these guys. But before you do that, make sure you go to plantificonkafuffle.com and see further information about them on, on there. And then, what's the best thing, Ben? In the first instance, reach out to you and uh, in that full top style and, and just yeah, more. have a book a chat. I don't bite, um, you know, and. Uh, love to sort of hear and, and show them the system and talk about what how they do things it's you know it's a very got a, have we got a calendly link or something for you ben? yeah 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 all well, my my calendar is is open and, and is uh yeah well we will pop that pop that onto the uh onto the thing at the end as well for anyone that needs to talk to you uh jen ben today thank you so much for for explaining to me i feel like i know a lot more about it and look really forward to, to obviously seeing uh, uh people give us feedback on that as well thanks Simon. perfect very nice thanks, thanks for having us Cheers, take care.